Okay, so my garbage day video just hit 1 million views. That's the first million view video on this channel, so what the heck is going on? I wasn't going to release a video this week because I've been really busy lately, both with filming for my upcoming videos as well as moving into our new house. Though I did find the time to take a train for the first time in about a year so that I can film some scenes in Delft. It is a stunningly beautiful city. But while I was missing in action, the YouTube algorithm decided, for the second time, to randomly promote my year and a half old Garbage Day video. In fact, this week was the most popular week for my channel of all time, despite not releasing any videos at all. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to look back on this video to see why it's been so interesting to people, as well as to answer some of the most common questions I've received. This garbage video was never intended to be popular. At the time I made it, Not Just Bikes was only a few months old and had only about 700 subscribers. I was in Canada visiting my family for Christmas and didn't want to miss my fortnightly video release schedule. We were staying in an Airbnb in this street in Toronto at the time. This is the street that inspired my missing middle video due to all the different housing types. Long story short, we didn't know what day was garbage day, but the house had this calendar that told us that organic waste pickup was every week, but recycling and garbage were fortnightly on alternating weeks. It reminded me of how ridiculous this system was. I remember how I used to mix up the weeks and put the wrong bin out before going to bed, or I'd miss the day to put the bins out and be stuck with an overflowing recycling bin for a month. And of course, the dreaded visits from the trash pandas. You see, in Amsterdam, our neighborhood had these underground garbage bins, and we never had to think much about what garbage to take out or when. We would just take it out whenever it was convenient. This topic clearly struck a chord with many people, probably because taking out the trash is such a universal experience and a lot of cities screw it up. And although these bins are pretty common in other cities in Europe, they're still a novelty in many other countries, and watching these things get emptied is so cool. So I can see the appeal of my original video. But while a hastily made three and a half minute video did enough to introduce the concept, it left a lot unsaid and that resulted in a lot of misunderstandings in the comments. People who live in car dependent places often responded they would hate having to travel somewhere to throw out their trash. And I find this interesting because these comments show how so many people don't understand what it's like to live somewhere walkable. When you live in a walkable city, you walk places. There's your bit of stunning insight that you've come to expect from this channel. But what I mean by that is that I walk somewhere pretty much every single day. And because these bins are spread out throughout the neighborhood, I'm guaranteed to be walking by one anyway. It's literally no effort at all to grab a bag of garbage on my way out the door and drop it in a bin on my way to where I'm going. And if I forget to take it out, then I just do it the next time. It requires almost no thought or planning. In suburbia, going somewhere is a trip. You have to start up your car, you have to drive out of your neighborhood, you probably have to sit in traffic, and you have to park somewhere near your destination. Even the most trivial of tasks, like buying a bag of milk, requires this effort, which is why suburbanites bulk shop for groceries and don't understand the appeal of picking up a few things as you walk past the vegetable shop. In a walkable city, getting groceries isn't a trip, it's just a trivially short stop on your way home. Living somewhere walkable is a fundamentally different way to live, and it fundamentally changes the way you interact with your city, in ways that people from car-dependent places have a hard time understanding. But I'll talk about that in more detail in a future video. Several people said this wouldn't work in their suburban neighborhood. I mean, okay, but we're talking about cities here. That being said, I have seen these bins even in suburban neighborhoods in the Netherlands, such as this one in Ermelo, where people had both bin pickup and underground containers, which seems pretty great to me. That's the kind of service your city can afford when it's not bankrupt from sprawling car-dependent infrastructure. Another common comment was that these would never work in Canada because they would freeze, but other people confirmed that you'll see these bins all over Scandinavia. I'm not surprised though, as winter is the favorite Canadian excuse for bad city design. They do it all the time for cycling. There were also some clueless people who saw this scene and thought that I was making it look more difficult than it was because I was carrying a bin with wheels. Yeah, I know the bins have wheels, I'm not stupid. 
but our house had 17 concrete steps and when I dragged a loaded bin over them, not only would it wake up the entire neighborhood with a banging, the wheels on the bin would crack. One thing that has changed since the original video was made was COVID. With so many people staying home, there's been a massive increase in the amount of residential garbage and some of the bins can't keep up. This has been especially bad for the cardboard bins, which were often full with boxes due to the recent surge in online shopping. But this isn't unique to the Netherlands. I've seen many people online mentioning that residential garbage has become a problem during COVID, like this recent tweet that was lamenting the piles of garbage lying around the streets of Philadelphia. So I still prefer it here, where there's sometimes garbage next to the bins, instead of other cities where there's always garbage lying in the street. Thankfully, the city seems to have worked this out because it's become better in the last few months, at least where we live in Amsterdam. Some people commented that to keep the raccoons out, you should just install a lock or bungee cord on the bin. My neighbors did that by attaching a belt to the bin, but then they'd forget to unlock it on garbage day and the garbage men would refuse to pick it up. And the raccoons will eat through the bungee cord, so that's not a great solution either. I'd rather just not have trash lying around my house for two weeks. Others said this wasn't a problem in the Netherlands because there are no trash pandas in Europe. Like, as if there aren't any other pests to worry about. But regardless, this is wrong, because trash pandas have been discovered living in northern Germany. Maybe the only reason they're not here is because so many places use these underground containers. Ever think of that, Mr. Clever Clogs? Some people said that kids would climb into them, but kids here aren't that stupid. Mostly. Lastly, I was amazed how many people got hung up on the space pen story. Yes, we know that you don't want to use pencils in space because of the graphite. And that story was false. I mean, I literally said it was false in the video. But that didn't stop several people from getting upset that I didn't tell the whole story of the space pen. But I won't talk about that in more detail in any future videos. And then there were people claiming that communal garbage bins were communist or something. <laughs> There's something about YouTube comments that really brings out the stupidest people. So anyway, why was this video so popular? Who knows? If there's one thing I've learned with YouTube is that I have absolutely no ability to predict what videos people will watch. This Garbage Day video was very short and barely covered the subject, which left enough gaps in the story for people to comment. Maybe that's the secret? Or maybe all it takes for a successful YouTube channel is to carry a garbage bin with wheels. I'd like to thank my supporters on Patreon who pay me to make these garbage videos. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to bonus videos, visit patreon.com slash knowledgeusbikes.